what is up you guys welcome back to another brilliant episode of impact on social i am your host all things chris as always and i'm so excited because today's guest has had a whole life experience um, of working of being a mom and also of retiring and she's gonna share with us her entire journey but more special she is my mom and i'm so excited to have her here on today's show because if you have a mom or a parent that's recently retired you know perhaps there has there, there can be some takeaways that um, you might pick from today's episode so without further ado let me introduce her and she's gonna tell you what her name is please <laughs> oh, welcome hi, christine i'm happy that I'm, I'm really happy to be here <laughs> sana, i'm glad that you saw it fit to invite me here my of name course. is wangare sylvia wangare mm -hmm. or other eunice i was baptized eunice but i loved sylvia more mm -hmm. so i just decided to go with sylvia yeah and um i'm happy and uh, i'm glad because i've had a good life yes and uh i'm retired now actually i just retired last year yeah in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic mm -hmm. and i've had a good life i've had about 40 years of working wow yeah as a, it's a blessing yeah I, I finished my high school i went to college mm -hmm. and those days we used to just get letters for, from the uh, office of the president wow yeah and you just get a letter come to the office of the president you, you are sent to a ministry they send you to where they want. Yes. And that was all. Yeah. You didn't have this hustling that people have these days, Mark Timey. At least that time, Kenyans we were hustle. very few. We were mm. not so many. Yeah. We didn't have those problems that people have these days. But we are glad that God has seen it fit to, for us to be here. Yeah. I've worked for 40 years. Yes. And I'm um, 60 years old now. Wow. Actually, Mommy, you don't even look it. <laughs> you don't even look it. I hope I have your jeans. It's by the grace of God. <laughs> And uh, actually, my experience in uh, working has been good. Mm -hmm. I started working when I was 21, uh, in 1981. Yeah. And uh, I got my firstborn, who was Christine Newell, when I was, <laughs> <laughs> when I was only 24. Yes. <laughs> so, like, a few years later? Yeah, a few years later. Mm. Yeah, I didn't wait a long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I've been having, a, I've had a good job. I've uh, had so many experiences. I've worked in the Ministry of Education, Agriculture. Agriculture. I've, yeah. I've got, worked in Nakuru, I've worked in uh, Nairobi. Actually, I retired in Nairobi in a research institute. Mm -hmm. And um, I can say God is good. He is because good. Because He is good because uh, today I'm here because He has been with me all along the journey. There has been challenges, there has been struggles, but all through it, He saw it me through. He saw yeah. me through all the struggles. Wow. And I came through because I always believed that there was some powerful divine meaning, person meaning yeah. beyond me there's mm. something beyond me that i could not do without yeah and that is why i see that these days there are so many things that people go through uh, i can see young generation going through a lot and I say it's like they are losing hope and they don't have a direction but god is there yeah. when you believe in god and you believe in yourself and you know there's a a, a more powerful being. divine being ahead of you you will always survive. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that's interesting. I mean, of course, hearing it from you, you know, I mean, for me, I, I you know, I draw an emotional connection. And uh, I'm curious to uh, find out what your life was like when you started working. I mean, you know, first that was in Nakuru. And, uh, you know, because I have bits of memories, you know, um, just before the Langa Langa fights. What were they called? The Nakuru War. Oh, okay. The Chaos. The Chaos. Yeah. Saba Saba. Yeah. yeah That's what chaos. it was. It was yeah. called Saba Saba, Mom. Yeah, the Chaos, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That was in 92. Yes. That's as far back as my memory goes. Okay. Uh, so I remember quite a bit. I'm just about, uh, that time I was just in... about eight years old. Yes. Yeah. I remember the Saba Saba clashes. Yes. I remember us going under the table and hiding. <laughs> Because there were there were grenades and uh, it was it was it was it was scary. But I don't think you were around. Like you I've were in college. That, like I've said, I started a job in uh, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I stayed there for about two years, and then that's when I got married and went to Nakuru, and joined my uh, red husband in Nakuru. Mm. And uh, that is when now him he was in the armed forces, 
And that mm -hmm. is when there was no chaos. But I, I, I had gone for an in-service course in Mobasa. Yes, and the yes, chaos started. Mm. And um, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad, but because there were tear gas and everything and all over, but you are with my sister. Yes. And uh, I think that at that time, because we were so young, we never really understood the real meaning of what was happening. Yeah, what but was you know, happening? In the morning, there was this chaos of, uh, I think it was a uh, tribal crashes. That's when they started. They were called Saba Saba. Yeah, they were called Saba, something like that. Mm. I think it is when some, I can't, uh, that by then I didn't understand well. Mm. But I came to realize that it was government issues and whatever. But I think when you're that young, you're not so bothered. Like even today, I see young people are not bothered about what is happening politically in the country, not knowing that they actually um, they affect. affect them mm. directly when you don't really know what your country is going through. But I came back and we went on staying in Nakuru, but at, at a point in time, I had to come back to Nairobi on transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, that was around 1995. And um, that time I came back to Nairobi and uh, we continued staying. And um, I would say that Nakuru wasn't a bad experience, it was still a good experience. Mm -hmm. Although there was, you, you'd wake up in the morning those days and you would get your door written X or with a, a black shako or white with a shock. And you didn't know if this targeted your house or anything. And so we decided to just get out of Nakuru and come back to Nairobi. Wow. Because Nairobi is cosmopolitan. You know, you know we are yeah. all here. Mm. So Nakuru was too much one side there. Eh? Mm. That's it, was, crazy. it was a good life. It was not a bad life. And uh, we came back to Nairobi. I went to college and now, and I, I got Mark and Stephanie and uh, we continued. And um, what I can say about retirement is that after working for uh, like 40 years, mm. every day you are waking up, you know where you are going. Mm. You have a purpose. Yeah. You know there's something that you are doing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, we normally get a letter before, a year before you retire. Mm -hmm. You know the service now, you know. Mm. The government gives you, they used to give you a very bad letter, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one who changed that in the, in the office. Because they would write you a letter saying that, you know, your services are no longer needed <gasps> in the government, you know. And I, and so when I, I joined really? Human, when, yeah, when I joined Human Resource, I told them, no, this is a very negative thing to write for someone mm. who was actually used to your, their youth working for you. Wow. You see, I've been, I worked there for, from when I was 21, very young. Yeah. I'm living at 60, and this is the kind of rate I see. This is not right. Yeah. So at a point in time, they, they, they changed they it. All they said, no, it. we are grateful, yeah. we are thankful for what you have mm -hmm. done. And uh, we're giving you a year now to, you know, mentally and psychologically prepare yourself that yeah. you're going home. Still, when that day comes, in the morning that you know now, this is my day of retirement. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. And this is a day, it's a two days, three days. You really wake up in the morning and you know your body is conditioned to your work, mind, your working. whole being is conditioned to working, to waking up, having a shower, going somewhere, meeting friends, right. sociary and uh, you know, Saturday you know this. But now you're waking up, you oh you, you wake up, you realize, oh, I'm not going to work. Yes. <laughs> where, where am I going? Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah. And especially because in the civil service, they normally don't even want you to do some other business beyond the working whatever. Or you might not even be a business-minded person. You know, we are not all the same. Mm -hmm. There are people who are very business-minded. Mm -hmm. The others who are just workers. Yani, you can just work. Eh? Mm. So you wake up and say, where am I going? And you know, there's that feeling of, like you start feeling like your usefulness is no longer there. It's like you don't have something to do. Mm -hmm. So you really need to condition and internalize that. You are still useful. You are someone of uh, value. Value. Yeah. And you, you have something to do. Because if you, that is why you, you realize that most people, and I will say this, especially men who are married and their wives stay in the, in the village, in the rural areas, to be going home so many times because the minute you go home and you really are not used to that village life, you're not used to the shopping centre, whatever, you might feel you are not of any value. Yeah. And that's why you find that most men die earlier when they retire than women. Because women sometimes you just condition your mind. Maybe you've been bringing up your kids on your own. Maybe you've been, uh, been alone. So you are okay. Yeah. But it's a good time because it's a good feeling to know that you've, you've been through college, you've been through uh, working, and then you are retired. It's mm. God who has given you the grace. Yeah, true. Yeah, so retirement is not a bad thing. I'm still getting used to it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, obviously, um, every stage of your life, I mean, and thank you so much for sharing all that you've shared with us. Because, um, you know, there's such a body of life that has happened, that has taken place from the time you were in college 
to becoming a mom to actually working actually working before becoming a mom and then you know that entire journey all through you know and uh you know of course um that has had to have taken a toll on you so i guess the question i have to ask is um do you feel like as you enter this phase of uh you've entered this phase of retirement that um you know mentally one isn't really prepared by anyone on what to expect the fact that you don't have you know the regular job you had when you knew you were waking up every morning to go to work um do you feel like um that um that that does take a mental toll on you a bit you know because now you have to figure out what the next steps are going to be for you what you need to do whether you want to be an entrepreneur whether you want to start up a small business or whether you're going to go home do you feel like that's something that people need to talk about more like what do you do after you retire because it can be a bit much or or do you feel like no that's a good question because eh mm -hmm. i have been in the civil service yeah all those years yeah okay well i was in the real central government and mm. then i went to a civil service that was like parastat or quasi yeah. half government half uh, any autonomy yeah. So what happens the government, what they do, what they normally do, they normally call people for uh, seminars. Mm -hmm. Just to rate, eh? like maybe they start giving when you're allowed 50 or 55. Yeah. They have seminars that they call people and they try to tell them how to prepare for retirement. Mm. If you are telling me to prepare for retirement at 55, you are not helping me. I think people should start preparing for retirement when they get employed. Mm. That first day, if there was someone there to tell them, now you've been employed, you are 21 or you are 25, you've got a personal number, you've got a salary, start preparing for retirement. Yes. What do I mean by that? Is start putting some money aside, aside. for retirement. Mm. Either through NSSF or your saving program or whatever, but start preparing for retirement. You don't really have to retire at the age that the government says you should retire or the company or whatever who has employed you but start preparing. There are people who say, I want to retire at 45. Yeah. I want to retire at 30. Retirement doesn't mean age, mm. 60 or 70. Mm. Retirement means that when your mind says, I have made enough money, I'm, I'm now, I can retire. And what do you mean by retire? It's not sleeping every day. Retire is meaning that you can go on holiday, you can travel as you want, you have money that you have saved on the side. Like, you know, Wazungus, we normally see white people come here in Kenya, old people holding hands, they have come for a tour. And then we keep on saying whites have money. No, whites don't have money. They just have a saving uh, culture. Culture. That us Africans, we do not have. Mm. You know, now, when I'm young, when I was 35, I, could, I didn't see, think I would get to 60. And there's nothing as bad as having a, a regular income every month, and then all of a sudden, it being cut to an eighth of what you used to get. For mm. example, you, you are getting 100,000 a month. Then all of a sudden it is 20 and you're used to that life of 100,000. Mm. So what I mean is that you should start, actually the, our president was saying the other day, was trying to tell people that we should now, the government, he was actually talking about the civil service, you should start getting like 2,068 shillings a month to NSF. And people made a lot of noise. Why, why, why? I wish they know that that is their money. Mm. Because with NSSF, even the taxman doesn't get it. Yeah. If you save and save every month 10,000, 10, 10, that is what you'll, you'll get without any tax. No mm. care right there. So, what I'm saying about uh, starting retirement at the first day of, um, of the Nini is that one. Mm -hmm. Start from the day you get a job, start saving on the side, start do, keeping something aside such that by the time you get to that 50 years, you feel like you want to relax. You mm. don't want to work anymore for anyone. You want to do your own things. Yes. You can do it and you still have, have that flow mm. that you used to have without any interruption. Yes. That's what I mean. Otherwise, wow. I don't think retirement is a very good thing. And I, I, I know people, most people have a fear of it, but it's the best, the best time of your life because this is when you actually have been relieved yeah. of those you know, you're feeling like duties and on duties. Yeah. So you are actually at a happy point where you know that you have grandchildren. Yeah. If you're lucky to have had those and grandchildren blessed, yes, and you're yes. feeling blessed, it's the best time of your life. Yeah. But you need to keep something on the side from the day you, you start, start working. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow, that that's really interesting that you say that, Mom, because um I mean I think 
uh, growing up, I remember you've always emphasized, I think even I remember when we were younger, um, my sister having a piggy bank, right, that you yeah. got her for cooperative, um, bank, cooperative yeah. bank. And uh, although I used to steal some cash from her piggy bank mm. so I can go out. <laughs> Well, she doesn't know, so hopefully she never knows. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, um, you know, you, you instilled in us a saving culture. I have to ask though, um, do you feel like drawing a comparison between people that come from a developed country and us who are here in a third world country when it comes to savings might be a bit, um, you know, sort of like unfair because their systems and how they earn their living, um, you know, in comparison to how civil servants here here locally earn. And, uh, you know, and I'm speaking from a general point of view, um, do you feel like uh, it's comparable? Because um, from what I've seen, um, you know, people in civil service aren't always the best earners. And uh, sometimes you know, with, uh, you know, having money, um, you know, that you've put aside for your kids' education or even taking money from circles and stuff, there's so much coming out of your paycheck every month, you know, that is going towards um, sort of loans and, you know, um, responsibilities here and there, that sometimes there isn't so much left to put aside for that NSSF, like you were talking about, or like for savings, so is it everyone then who is in a position to save enough for retirement, you know, and in comparison to people in a first world, is it even comparable? How do, what, what, what's your take on that? How do you feel? Actually now at this point, we cannot compare people from, you know, diaspora and people here. No, okay, that may not call it diaspora, that is Western Developed, house, developed uh -huh. countries. We cannot compare because, you know, in developed countries, even when my an 18-year-old kid finishes college, yeah. or 21 year old finishes college, and he's out there and he's not working, yeah. there's that thing called welfare. Exactly. That we don't have here in yeah. Kenya. So there are people I, I, in uh, Australia, in uh, Europe, or wherever, who don't work because, yeah. you know, if they don't care. Yeah, there's always this money coming from the government, yeah. which we don't have here in Kenya. Yeah. And let me say here at this point that no money is literal. And mm. that is the worst mentality that people have. How much am I earning? I'm earning 40,000 a month. I, this is too little for me to survive on. Mm. So what you, people normally do here in Africa, they live beyond their means. Mm. You will find someone who is earning uh, 50,000, living in a 25,000 house rental. Mm. That house will never be yours. Yes. Even if you live there for, a, for another hundred years, yeah. that house, you are, you are making another person rich. Yeah. Why don't you go to Kamul, to a place where you can buy a small plot, be paying 20,000 20, every month or mm. five, live, don't live beyond your means, yeah. such that you will always be able to save a thousand shillings. I keep on telling you, even if you save <laughs> a thousand shillings a month, it's enough than when you don't save anything. Yeah. You know, whenever you get 50,000 in Mexicana, mm. No, I mean, it's not easy to save. Okay, that's the that, now that's the problem. That's the, that's, the, that's the problem that people have. Mm. They look at the money; it's too retro. You say you cannot save. Yeah. But a time will come because God it's bless. True. These days, people are people are being blessed to seventy years, yes. and you will be sixty, and you will not have anything in your account. Yeah. And I'm telling you, that is the worst. I, okay, I'm not on that point, but that is the worst <laughs> feeling. When you say you want to take a soda, yeah. and you can't afford it. Yet yeah. you've worked all your life. Mm. You would come from the office, go to a place, meet friends, and find uh, friends who don't mean much to you, by the way. Mm -hmm. You'll find that young people these days, they'll go to a club, someone uses about 5K per night, 2,000, uh, 3,000. Yet, that is not the kind of money they are making per day. Yeah. But at time comes when you realize it's the best thing that you could have done is save money or some, some money, however little money you're earning. Mm. Because there's no little money by the no, way. No, it's true, it's true, it's true. And you know, I, and I, we can I never even And we can never even compare ourselves with the Western world. First world, because yeah. first world, they are way ahead of us. Yeah. You know, they were like, uh, let's say America was like 200 years um, independence. Yeah. As we are just, how many years? How many years are we? Uh, since we got from independence. 1960. Yeah, hey, that, that's about, hey, since 1960. Yeah, we got our independence in 1963. So it's about 40 something years. Yes. We are way behind, eh? Yeah. But there are people who are putting themselves from the gutter. Yeah. And you decide, you just say, I don't want to be poor. I'm talking to young people right now. You don't finish college, you have a degree, and you sit in the house. 
and we to get a, call, a white collar job. There are no more white collar jobs mm. in Kenya, especially in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Hakuna, if you're not connected, if you don't know someone big somewhere, waiting for that job is just like waiting for mana from above. Exactly. So <laughs> get, get out there, do something. We have known people who pull themselves from the gutter and they become people. Yeah. yeah, it's just believing in yourself, having that ambition, believing that I can do it. Like uh, President Obama said, I can do it, I yeah. can do it. Yeah. And you believe that. But you know, here in Kenya, we are so much used to uh, government's idea, Sarikani's idea. Which government is helping you? Yeah. These guys in government, they, they, they are not, they are in government for other reasons, yeah. but not to help that. So I, 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 I would say that I haven't, I did come from a very good background. Mm -hmm. But I was lucky enough to go to a college where we didn't pay school fees. Yeah. We were given accommodation. Actually, mm -hmm. we were given even uh, pocket money. Yeah. That was called boom. Every, mm -hmm. every time you're getting money. <laughs> and the government pays the school, they actually give you pocket money. At the end of the college, the duration of your college, yeah. because they actually give you a job. Even mm -hmm. if you failed, mm -hmm. you, they, you know, because you have to pay their money, mm -hmm. so they have to give you a job. <laughs> and I you love are, it. And you are boarded. Wow. Actually, you are boarded to pay for yeah. that, that money. So you get a job and you sit back. If you don't now want to continue with your education because there are people who are not ambitious, me, I went back to college, I, get, I kept on learning. You have to keep on learning. And even at my age, there's always something new I'm learning. Like yeah. I'm sitting in a podcast for the first time in my life yeah. at my age. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm not. I don't know, nervous. And it's, really, I you, no, you're so Happy, relaxed, you're doing so good. So I'm saying, <laughs> you can learn a new thing every day. Yeah. And especially our young people, these guys who are between 20 and 30, mm. please try to change your mentality. Know that you can do it for yourself. If you have a mom or a dad or a relative, even a friend, who can give you 10,000 shillings, you can start something. Mm. You don't have to sit there and wait for someone to come and employ you. We have the internet that we never had during our time. Imagine the internet has opened the world. It's a global village yeah. now. You just go online, you get a job in America. You mm. get a college, you get a sponsorship. Mm. You just don't need to sit there and wait for a job in a government or whatever. Mm. Do something. So in, in your, in, you know, and you know, I mean, if it's, you know, so how do you feel about uh, what you see with your kids? Like, are we trying? Yeah, are you we, are. Are we, you doing, are. Are we, yeah, are we okay. trying not to like be over dependent on like say the government for work and trying to like yeah, you know, you still, <laughs> you know, no, 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 you, you are not doing that, but because you know people have different mindsets, mm -hmm. and I, I, I keep on saying people's constitutionally, people are different, right? People are, are wired differently. There are people who are wired to be business people. Mm -hmm. There are people who are wired to go to college and learn a, have a degree and get a job in an office. Yeah. You will never tell that person that they are not going to get a job in an office. Yeah. Whatever the situation they are seeing, the reality of the thing is that there are no jobs. You'll tell someone, let, give you, let me give you this 20K, go yeah. start a business, go to the compound somewhere, get some, sell them. But you see they are not there. Yeah. They don't believe, they just want that salary. Yeah. They would rather even earn 15,000. Mm. And they actually have a degree. It's true. But not go there and do it. Yeah. People are wired differently. And that is why we don't put people in a box. In a box and actually judge them. Mm. Kids are different. Like parents should know that their kids are different. Because there's that kid who is over ambitious. There's that kid who is, I mean, how? There's that kid who's also pulled themselves from the gutter and get out there and do something. Yeah. So let's also take our kids by the way they are. And let us also realize that life is not, at this point in time, life is not so easy for the young people we have in this world, yeah. and especially in Africa. Yeah. People are going through so much mm -hmm. and people have got different uh, levels of uh, uh, perseverance. Right. And the uh, Kufumiria, mm. if I can speak a bit of Swahili. Yeah. Yes. Well, I just have to give you your flowers, ma'am. Like I said earlier, um, I feel like, um, you know, you have had such a big impact on me. And, um, you know, I speak for myself, but I'm certain that... Uh, you know, Steph and Mark, my sister and brother can also speak for themselves and see the same thing. Um, for me, I feel like um, you having raised me as a single mom, as a single parent, and just seeing your resilience, how hard you have, to, you've had to work so that, um, you know, you give us the best education that you could give us. And even that, um, you know, the advice and uh, the guidance that you've had um, or, or you've given us over the years is what has made us, um, you know, be where we are. So I just want to thank you so much. And um, I feel like uh, people just need to tap onto the wealth of um, 
you know knowledge and advice and guidance that you you give so um i'm wondering are you gonna restart your uh youtube channel sylvia's <laughs> chronicles because know, maybe people I loved how funny you are <laughs> i'm just i'm just happy that the world has really changed mm -hmm. in those years uh, 40 years yes I, and i'm just trying to believe that things will even change for the better mm. because like you have pointed out i brought you up as a single parent but as i can just tell my audience it wasn't my wish it's just but those days mm. there there was a lot of tribal 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 things like yeah. you go home take your boyfriend home and you don't we cannot take this guy he's from this tribe he's low yeah he's low mm. so me i was just <laughs> my dad said no 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 yeah and that was no. And that was a no. And yeah. it was the end of the story. And you are so young. You are so fun. You are so in that kind yeah. of way. If had it been now, I would have told him, no, 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 no. It's my life. I'm living. You have lived yours. Mm. But that time is those days that the, our parents, you know, those my mom parents. Curses. Nini. No, you can't. You can't. Mm, I'll take agree. back my name. So, yeah, my name. I cannot go into a rural country or you know, that kind of. I'm so happy that these days there's a lot of interaction. Mm. And I'm believing and I'm happy that even the president's son has married a rural. I can hear a lot of inside the whatever. So it's it's over now. Yeah. Yeah. Actually that one of the single parenthood, it, it sometimes it comes because not of your wish, but it just happens. But mm. it, it didn't stop me from getting what I wanted. Yes. It didn't stop me from bringing all my kids to high school. My uh, my kids all have uh, graduated in high in, in universities. Mm. And I'm happy because I did it and I did it alone. Yes, you did. And I tell women out there who feel that you need to have if, if you are in a, an abusive relationship, you feel that you have to be there because of the man. Walk out and believe in yourself and you will do it. Mm. And you will do it. Mm. And that is what I say. Wow. Mm. Oh my gosh, mom. Mm. Like it's, mm. it's, you know, for me, like, I, you know, I know you as my mom, but uh, the world gets to fall in love with you as well. They get to know, you know, how beautiful of a heart you have and how resilient and how strong you are. Because, um, you know, like if I was to speak for myself, you really are the wind behind my wings yeah, like if i you. fly high thank it's because you. there's a lot of push uh happening um in the back uh, at the back of the scenes you know so um i just want to thank you so much for coming on the show um and the impact you've personally had on my life thank you. and the impact that um even this conversation is going to have on social because someone is going to feel wow it's good to hear from a parent's perspective or also someone who's about to retire can get to understand what it's like and that if you saved enough or if you have saved um even the little that you have saved you can definitely do something with it even starting a business right yeah yeah, it, yeah. there's no age that is no, a limit yeah, yeah. yeah and good. you look amazing you're looking super thank nice you. wow thank yeah you. so i'm glad that i have your jeans thank you <laughs> so with that ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning in for today's show impact on social as always take a screenshot right now of this show and share it on your social media so we can chime in on the conversation down below and definitely be sure to hit us up on social before we leave though we want to give her uh, a, a really nice quick fire with my mom uh miss wangari before we leave we're gonna take a short break don't go nowhere Welcome back to Impact on Social, a show that aims to empower, inspire, and uplift. If you're watching us from the socials, definitely make sure that uh, you hashtag us Impact on Social. Take a screenshot right now and do that and tag us everywhere on Facebook, on Instagram, at Impact on Social. And of course, we're back again with my mom, who is a wealth of knowledge, and I'm so glad that she's here. So we're going to give you a quick, quick fire, mom. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never be. All right, the first one is morning or night. Are you a morning person or are you a night person? I'm a night person. Really? Yeah. Mom, you've always woken up super early. Me, I'm the one who stays up late. I'm just changed now. <laughs> now it's a night. Yes. So now, now it's I'm recent. A night person <laughs> because now, you know, in the morning, I don't have to wake up to go anywhere. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, would you rather eat uh, some irio? or uh, go out for a meal that you've never had before? Like a new restaurant, Chinese, Indian, whatever, Italian? Of course, a new restaurant. So something new, Italian. a new palette. Oh, yeah. Italian, okay, okay, we're going to look for one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you rather 
um, education or experience? Experience. Experience, why? Yes. I've seen education doing nothing to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, education is just, in the, you know, education mm -hmm. is not uh, that kind of, you know, experience. Yeah. And I've seen people who are educated, who are not, who don't have wisdom. Mm. So I would rather experience. experience. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Such wise words. Oh my gosh. Well, I can't thank you enough for being here today. I hope you come back. I will come back. Let me know. Let us know in the comments if you would want this to be a, a, a co-hosted kind of a, a show because um, I think that we have different perspectives. Every time you guys probably will comment and say this is the least we've had you speak, Chris. <laughs> I know it. So if you've enjoyed this show and uh, you definitely want to see my more of my mom, uh, Miss Wangari, on the show, please do let us know on the comments down here. Make sure you tag us everywhere on Instagram, on Facebook, at Impact on Social. And we're looking forward to seeing you on the next show. Any parting words for our audience? Ah, just telling them to have a good time. We are nearing Christmas. Have a good time. Enjoy yourselves and always be real. Always be real. I love it. All right. I'm your host, All Things Chris. Until the next one, stay impacted and impactful on others. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, guys. <laughs>